Talk to you guys today a little bit about, we've been updating you along the way and we just wanted to bring you along to where we are. I know Tom heard some of this already. But um, after I, I met with all of you, um, we kind of let you know the troubles that we were having financially um, to keep the doors open. We've been exploring lots of different options. Um, we went down to the state and met with the Department of Education and that was a very helpful meeting. Um, they gave us a couple of different pathways, a few different pathways that we could go down. One that was particularly interesting to us was um, to pursue a freeway accreditation. Um, we would not be a charter school at that point, which is something we'd like to avoid if we can continue to partner with the schools. Um, with the freeway accreditation, we would be an accredited school. We could issue credits to students. We could take students privately. But it allows us to continue working to partner with the schools, which is an important part of the program to us. Um, WITCO, we, to do that though, we've had to increase the tuition rates that we've traditionally offered to the schools. Um, in the past, we've tried to, we've always tried to keep the cost as low as possible to the schools, and um, so only a fraction of what the schools receive in state dollars has come to us, as you guys know. Um, so we've increased the, we're asking for a larger fraction, still not the entire amount, so I think it's a fair um, partnership between us and the schools, um, certainly more fair than it's been in the past. Um, Whitco Community Schools has already agreed to contract with us under that and actually has um, almost doubled their spots that they've traditionally had with us. Um, we still have yet to hear from um, Smith Green Community Schools as to their decision, and there's a board meeting tonight um, with Whitley County Consolidated Schools, um, so we're hoping to talk more about it at that board meeting tonight as well. Um, but their concern is the same concern that we all have is the dollars just aren't there. And so um, we're, we're continuing to work on that. And so we will be submitting a, a proposal for freeway accreditation to the state. We're hoping that either the first or second week of July that that would be approved. And then after that, um, we could apply to be able to accept vouchers, which, which would be another additional way to stream funding if, if for some reason a, a student could not be referred through the school system, which would always be our first pri priority or our first preference would be that they would be referred that way. If for some reason we can't work that out, then we could accept them through the voucher program. So we're still working to try to avoid that if possible, but, um, but also to keep that open so that we can keep our doors open and be able to continue to serve as many students as possible or as many students as need the services in Whitley County, which is our mission. So, that's kind of one thing I want to add is that Nikki's the one question that's consistently been asked to Nikki is why? why? Why could you in the past do this and you can't do any longer? And my answer to Nikki is, you know, is that we've tapped on every door. We, we've, you know, we have gotten funding or received funding from so many different agencies but we just feel like, you know, every year we're in this position that we can't commit to our staff, you're going to have a job, or to the students, you can be here next year. And we just, our board said, it's time. And I know the commissioners, when you went out there, you felt the same way that, you know, we can't rely on a maybe we're going to get that funding again. You know, we just, we, this is our time, did we just need to go for it, see if we can make it, you know, if we can get the funding secured, and if not, you know, I think it's a loss, but we've done our best. So. Well, provide a, a brilliant service. There's, there's, there's no argument there. Uh, do you have a read on why you haven't heard from Smith Green? Can that mean that we're not going to participate? We've, <clears throat> we've heard rumors that they could possibly not be participating, and then when I contacted the administrators, I was told that, there, that I shouldn't be concerned and that um, there weren't any problems. And so um, we're hoping to try to get a meeting um, I know September McConnell of the Community Foundation is um, working to try to coordinate a meeting so that we can talk and discuss and get something finalized. And our deadline that we sent out, out on the contracts was July 1st, so we're hoping to hear one way or another by then. And the deadline, I guess, is um, we sent out two different rates. One, there's a discounted rate, I guess, if we can contract before July 1st. We'll continue to accept students after that, but. Um, at a, a slightly higher cost just to offset what we will need to do to scramble to get the staff to be able to support additional students. But the students you receive, this is going to be in the form of a question, but so stay with me. Mm -hmm. The students you receive are 
being paid, the, the state is paying their local school district for them? Correct. Regardless of whether they're in any one of those three schools or they're in your school, they're getting the full amount. Correct. Okay. Which begs the obvious question to the school, to the school corporations, why, why is the government, why is the Whitley County government stepping into what should be an educational, this is just Don Amber talking, sorry, I just, it's just, you know, I, because you provide a wonderful service. I, I know, I know George and I were just terribly impressed by what you do. There's no argument that you're really putting some people back in mainstream where they need to be. They're, they don't make it with you, they're probably going to jail, quite frankly. So, uh, you're getting people to graduate from high school, what a wonderful thing. But I just don't know where government really plays into this. Well, and the in argument that I'm hearing on the other side of that, then the argument that I get back from the school board is um, they, these students would be eligible for expulsion. And um, if they expel these students, it's free to them. Um, and they still continue to keep those dollars from the state. And if they were expelled and they're on the streets committing crimes or being unproductive, it becomes a county responsibility. That's I, that's not well, if I was my a school view, that's official, the I, I wouldn't be very proud of making a statement like that, quite right. frankly. That wouldn't make me very proud to say, hey, it's if we expel them, they're out of our system. We keep the money. That, right. that, does, right. that doesn't ring very well, set very well with me. So, well, but and uh, it's fit yeah. under corrections in the past because I think we do provide a service to the county in the in the sense that we're um, encouraging the students to become productive citizens rather than a drain on our finances. If we're going to end up serving them in the court system or in the correction system at some point if we don't catch them now. And so I really truly see it as continuing to be a partnership. And the, the amount that we're asking from the school systems, I think is a fair amount at this point. It's still only a third, a bit, roughly a third of our total budget it would come from the school systems. And the rest of our programming would either come from grants or donations, private donors, or from, hopefully from the county support that we've always received. So um, we're still only asking for a, you know, I continue to use the word fraction, but we're asking for a larger fraction than we've asked for before, but it's still just a fraction of what we need to provide this service. So I really see it as continuing to be truly a partnership within the community from a lot of different agencies, and hopefully that can continue. How many kids in the polls? How many kids are out there? Well, this year we served 52 total. Um, some of those, you know, were for part, all of those were for partially part of the year, but 52 total, and we issued over 250 credits. It's 52 students. I don't Thank the exact yeah, have there, So, okay, because I know how much money you got from the school last year. Mm -hmm. When you tell them, do they, do the kids go to the schools at all during the day? I mean, Sometimes they transition back okay. into the school, or so, we had a couple. weren't they going like half day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they go back to the school. We so had three this year. That for the last trimester, we were trying to reintroduce them into a mainstream classroom, and so they would go there for two hours a day, and then we would go and transport them and pick them up and bring them back to our school for the remainder of the day. So we can work out those kinds of things as well. Um, and, and actually what we had was we were bringing two students back to the school and then getting three more students. So they still take up the same amount of spots, per se. We have them half a day. We're kind of trading them all. But and is it the schools, um, Wicca, Smith, and Columbia City, that give you the names of the kids, or is it the parents, or is it the only the kids who have already been in trouble? Um, it can be from a... Right. About 70% of the kids that we had this year had never been in trouble, had never been on probation. And um, most of our referrals come from the, either the guidance counselors or the administrators at the school that identify kids that are in need of our services. But we can also take private referrals. So sometimes we'll get a contact from a parent that says, you know, I really need something different for my student. This school isn't working for them. And so, you know, we encourage them to give us a try, and it's something, it looks different, it feels different, it is different in every way, and sometimes we can have a lot of success with those kids as well. And I guess the other thing that I really want the community to know and the school to know is that 
um, is to remember that by removing one disruptive student from a classroom, the other 29 kids in that classroom are benefiting as well. And so when it looks like it's you know a certain dollar amount per student, we have to remember that removing that one student is really benefiting 30 students in the classroom. Or in, at the high school, for instance, they're in seven classes. It's really benefiting you know, 200 kids when we remove one student that's distracting those teachers from being able to do their job and teach the rest of the class. So. I see it as a huge benefit to the community and I'm hoping that the school, all three school boards will see that as well and, and we're hopeful to be able to continue to work with the commissioners to see it as a community support also. Question? One of the things that I used to ask and comment is the fact that <coughs> In the paper, I believe it was the superintendent of schools, Willie County Consolidates, said something about starting their own school for this type individual. And I told the committee the other day, I felt that if the high schools really didn't support it, you know, if one would even drop out, I would see a hard time for it to yeah. keep going. Uh, I don't know if we can make any gain on getting a certain a greater amount. We've talked to state legislators about this, but if that student, and it seems to me, and they have an interest, that if a kid is not enrolled in school, how can you justify keeping the tuition amount coming from the state? If they transfer from one public school to another, the money, I believe, travels, transfers. Here you get, you say, one third of the total amount comes back. And I think that needs to be changed. Uh, that if the student goes, his remaining balance of tuition money should go. And they can do that. They know how much per day would be in 180 days in school. Divide that by your total tuition. If he was there 30 days, take 30 days out and transfer the rest out. And I think that would be easy to do. But then again, any time you mention vouchers or charter schools, you immediately throw up a red flag just like you were in a bullfight in arena right. mm -hmm. to the public schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for every student they lose, and if they lose a lot of them, you're going to have to probably cut back on staff or a custodian. And that's what we're really hoping to avoid. But. You know, at the, we, we don't want that to sound threatening. We don't. We want to continue to partnership. That's. We want to make it clear that that's our priority. But at the same time, we want these students to be served. And if they're going to be expelled, if they're going to be on not having programming, then we want to be able to continue to provide that. And if the voucher system is the way that we can do that, that's our fallback plan. But it truly is a fallback plan. We don't want to resort to that unless we can't work out a partnership with the schools and, and we've made that clear to the Department of Education too and and they understand that and see the benefit in that as well and so we want to we want to partner with the schools first and foremost and if we can make that work I, I believe we can make it work um, you mentioned that the article in the paper said that they were looking at internal programs and, and we strongly believe from doing what we've been doing for the last 12 or 13 years that an internal program just can't work. If we moved our exact program and our exact staff into one of the school buildings, it wouldn't work. Um, I think part of the reason that we've been able to su be successful is that we are different, we are separate. Um, some of these kids have had such a stigma, such a bad stigma from what school has become to them that the only way that we can really break through those walls is to show them that we're not school, we're different, and we can do things a little bit differently to reach our ultimate goal, which is to provide an education to them. And whatever that takes, that's what kind of our motto has become, whatever it takes to do that. So I, I can't see where this would be if they start a branch, 
of a school like this, or part of their curriculum, call it what you want, uh, that it would be cheaper for them. Yeah. No, I can't you know, imagine it. If they're, if they're concerned about the dollar bills, right. you know, we have a school out here. It's just costing us a fraction of their tuition. Right. How can we find a room? Maybe they have one. But uh, you have a complete gamut of students. Right, middle and school and high it, school. Yeah, and so for them to do that, hire teachers, uh, unless they have a surplus, I can't see why they feel that it would be to their advantage. And I, I don't know, I support your program 110%. On this committee, I just would like to say the prosecuting attorney, both judges, we have a banker, we have a principal of the school, and do you have a superintendent also in there? We don't right the now. representative is Jennifer. Jennifer serves on it. Mike Schrader serves on it. Uh, who am I missing? Steve Weaver. Steve Weaver. The mayor's so, office. Yeah, so we have a wide variety on this committee, then we discuss things that goes to your executive board. And so it, it takes in a lot of different areas of community corrections or board or probation, call it what you want, but it is helpful. If you ever visit it, you're free to do so. It is a we love to have visitors. relaxed atmosphere. <laughs> thing, but but you have to keep the interest there and try to work with them to change their thinking habits and working habits so that they can become successful. If you have the same sort of atmosphere, it's not going to, a lot of it is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you get in a class of 28, 29, and if you're like me, you, you have an attention span right now, about 20 seconds, it used to be a little longer, but 20 seconds now. But, you know, it, your first thing you're doing, you're twitching papers, you're doing this, and first thing you become a, what they call a discipline problem or a distraction. So you have to do something. You have to go stand in the corner today. Or you have to do this, and once you stand in the corner too many times, out the door you go. And that's a sad experience. And, and you get uh, young ladies who become pregnant, what do they do? It's a little embarrassing to go to school for some of them, I'll just drop out. Well, here's an alternative for you Absolutely. that you don't need to fall back in your life. And if you miss a half year or a year of high school for one reason or another, that just sets your life back a half year or a year. And this is a way that they can keep up. The credits are accepted by the high schools. They have a say in the curriculum. You, you, communicate with them, what should we be teaching? It, it's not just like you're out in a left field without a club. So I would hope that uh, the schools, members of the school board, I would <coughs> encourage them to, to see, and I'd be interested to see how many of them have ever visited to see what it's like. And it's probably a small percentage. But now I'm off my soapbox, so I want to thank you, Mr. Chair. But I think you're right. I, if I can just say, we're really offering three programs. We're offering the middle school program, we're offering the high school program, and we're offering the teen parenting program. And really, to replicate those three programs, we're able to do it in one building in separate areas. Um, there's there's just no way to offer it at the cost that we're providing to them. And so, you know, I I invite them to look, explore their options otherwise, because I think that they would see that we're still offering a really good deal for what we're doing in that the education piece, like you said, is one part of what we do, but the counseling piece and offering to them, the so teaching them the social skills to be able to be successful back in a classroom or in life and working through some of the obstacles that were in their path, in their path before, if we can remove those, they can transition back into a classroom or into a job if they graduate um, and continue to be successful. And that part of what we do can't be replicated in the classroom, the relationship part of it, and, and the one-on-one -on -one interaction that we can offer with our staffing is just can't be replicated for the cost that we're providing. So hopefully 